see you. You too. Mwah. Hey. I love your bikini. Thanks. So cute. You always have the cues of bikinis. Not working. Yeah. Oh, it's not working? Like I said, if a grown man wants to cry, that would be the time. Right there. It was, it was hard. But I did line up a boat rental place down the street. I'm gonna run over there, grab it, pull right up here, I'll take all this gear, dump it right onto that boat, head out. When I thought the boat was gonna get fixed and everything, I stopped by this marina right down the street, which used to be called Smuggler's Cove. It's now called Isla Marina. So I stopped over there and got some chum from them because I was thinking I would drop some chum so you guys could shoot some mangroves and muttons that would come up to the chum. And you know, I was talking, I saw a boat rental and I was like, hey, just curious, what kind of boats you got for uh, rent? And they showed me the boats, gave me a good price. So I thought I would keep that as an option, you know, just in case, like what if, what if the boat doesn't get fixed? Hey, Christine, you should come with me and drop me off. And I'm gonna grab a boat. Can you get my phone? And at the meantime, also, you know, I'm talking with all the guys there and we're talking about fishing and diving and I tell them my problems. And so this guy, Brock, at the marina gives me a number of a local guy because I've been calling like every mechanic that I can get my hands on to try and come out. And they're all like, we can't get to you until after Christmas. You know, it's the holidays. I'm like, come on, nobody can get to me. And uh, this guy gives me a number of this guy, Jeff. Hey, uh, I was giving you a number by a friend of mine and said you might be able to come by and help me uh, fix my boat. Whenever I turn the key, nothing's happening. I got power everywhere else, so I'm not sure. All right, I'm down here in Venetian shores. And Jeff, like, he's like, yeah, I'll come out, come out by three o'clock. Okay. All right, thank you, man. Bye. It's sweet, but I didn't, you know, sometimes you don't know, then maybe they don't come. Third day, not being on the boat. I racked my brain about the whole boat. So Lauren gets there, the part is there, I plug it in, there's nothing like shit. Damn. So he just went with one of the twins and he's gonna pick up a rental boat. We're still gonna get on the water, so that's good. It's not on this boat, not that one. Wish us luck. This place is really nice. Look, it has a pool, everything. Nice outdoor area, fire pit, fancy. Super fancy. Very nice. Get the bow rental, I shoot over there. I got picked between uh, 23 foot, similar to this kind of boat, well, monohull, or a uh, catamaran. So I chose the catamaran. <laughs> Thanks to these guys for hooking us up with a rental boat. Putting us back in action. It's a good opportunity to test out riding out one of those things for diving. And it was a flat, calm day, like literally like zero foot seas, so I didn't want to waste the day. And Lauren came that whole way, I didn't want to like you know, say bummer, we can't go. You guys know what kind of fishing we're going to do tonight? Um, he's, he was talking about doing a reef. Reef, okay. So and then maybe, maybe do both. So, we had a boat. Boom. This is our boat for today.
We just unloaded Judah's boat and now we are going to load the rental. I'm on a company meeting while I'm trying to do this. <laughs> I'm here. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing something very tricky. Okay, we're good. Go ahead, continue. That's all stuff that's on the books though. I could break that all out. Yeah. Yeah, all those transactions. Christine, everything in the head needs to come out. You can't complain when really all you need to do is work like maybe two hours a week. And it just so happens to be like at the worst possible time. I like it. I like it. Got the dream team. All right. Good meeting. Thanks. All right. Bye. What a freaking day, man. So here's the deal. I need, uh, I got a mechanic on the way here. Hopefully he can fix it. Okay, we're ready to go. shot right out. I think we got out of like one. through everything and then I got out there and I'm like hey, when am I supposed to bring this back I'm supposed to bring it back by five and I was like oh man this is where you're gonna get a fish for exactly have like literally one hour Shit. get the boat back to the boat rental place boat rental life we had so much gear in there that means I gotta like bring it back by four it's only 40 foot here so I was driving, I was letting y'all kind of dive in some shallow water. Okay, good luck. So I tried to put some chum down so hopefully you girls could shoot some fish. Nothing, bull shark. 
but I got a yellow jack. Oh, he's huge. But that was your first time doing espeto, which is the technique of dropping down on the bottom and just sitting there and waiting for the fish to come to you. So look, what I want you to do is go to the bottom and literally just hang out and go <laughs> and just wait, like try to be still and try to wait. Italian. Mm -hmm. Italian's been it. But uh, that was your first time doing that and you really got to get good at that. Not only is that good for the fish coming into you, but it allows you to like drop down and stop moving and relax. Because when you're swimming, you're like working up yourself and you want to start breathing more. But when you lay on the bottom, you have way more time in the water because you're not moving at all. You're just moving your eyes, maybe your head very slowly. Sometimes I see the little fish and I just kind of concentrate on them and time like slows down. Oh, there's another one. All right, good job. <laughs> so that was our first time doing that. And after experiencing that a little bit and I was able to extend the rental out into the evening to where we didn't have to like shoot right back. All right, well we had to bring the boat back by five. But the boat rental guys down there at Smuggler's Cove were so nice, they said, you know what, keep the boat overnight, bring it back in the morning if you fix your boat, if not, take it out. Good guys, good guys. So, I'm suiting up. I'm gonna help Lauren put some food on the table, because we got no fish. Actually, we have a bunch of yellow jack. You don't come to the Keys to eat yellow jack. <laughs> and you don't eat before you die. Everybody knows that. You can tell that they love each other so oh, yeah. much. <laughs> Bunch of fish busted out over there in that chunk. You see it over there? So we decided to go a little deeper and I suited up and I jumped in. Okay, so it's my turn to drive the boat getting a little cold because it's 77 degrees in the water and I'm only wearing a two and a half mil wetsuit. But uh, I went down to the bottom. I think I was like at 70 feet. It could be wrong. It could be shallower. But I think it was around there. And I was just waiting and I did some grunts. And then this huge shark came straight for me. <laughs> And I think he was just curious, so I, I put my gun in front of me just in case he wanted to come a little too close, so I could poke him away. And he ended up veering a little bit, and I saw a yellow jack behind him, so I shot that, stoned it, and got that on the boat. Judah and the twins are in the water and there's these seagulls just flying all around them. Look at them diving. <laughs> all the seagulls are diving because Judah has a chum bag there. I think he's throwing like little pieces of chum. I'm pretty sure he tied it to my flasher float. Hopefully they get something. We're in 80 feet. All right, we're in the right place at the right time. We got everything. Came up. Something really crazy could happen at any moment of time. Some tuna could roll in, some mahi could roll in. Anything could roll in right now. So, be, you know, we're, I know we're having a good time swimming around, but be ready. That's some pretty cool stuff happened. So I took us right over the ledge, 70 to 90 foot. And what, what'd you see? You saw. So first I went down, I didn't go all the way to the bottom because it was too deep for me, but I saw a bunch of fish and then I went back up and then I told you, I was like, there's a ton of fish down there. And then you went down there and then you shot a trigger. Oh yeah, 
out the trigger. I needed to put food on the table because triggers, they're good eating. Yeah, that's the only thing I saw. Sailfish coming in was the coolest thing mm -hmm. that I've almost ever seen. That was so cool. That was so cool. Woo! That's the closest I've ever gotten to a sailfish in my life. You captured me with the sailfish, but he came right in and was chomping the bait. Had these mullet. You know, you know the mullet we were using was the mullet that we made that video on. When oh. we were casting that and all that mullet. Mm -hmm. That was the mullet. I've saved it this whole time. <laughs> Then the tuna, the wahoo. The wahoo. Yeah, the tuna and the wahoo. So, oh yeah, you shot at your first wahoo ever. <laughs> but I got too excited and shot it too far away. <laughs> yeah, what happens, you know? So, Victoria goes down. There's a big old black fin. The black fin kind of like spooks off, and a wahoo just comes right in. Christine dives down on the wahoo. It was cool though seeing you just like line up and swim after. I was filming, I was like, look at this. <laughs> that was a lot. But don't feel bad about missing that. I mean, that's, that's happened to me. You're not gonna hit fish every time. I mean, you're gonna miss on your first. I missed on my first couple of shots. Remember my Wahoo Fever video? Missed quite a few times, so I can't talk. Christine's first Wahoo experience. How did that look underwater? Pretty cool. Welcome back on board. We've seen Wahoo literally every time we go out here, like in blue water. Look at this sunset. Isn't it pretty? figured out the problem. They just left for the day with the key still in the ignition. But that was a cool experience, headed back in. And the next day was my birthday. But my boat was broken.